We welcome Dr. Nasir Aruri and his presence in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we hope that his dialogue will strengthen support and understanding for the crisis affecting Palestinians. Yours sincerely, Real Menar, co-chair House of Commons, the Canada-Palestine Parliamentary Association, and Libby Davies, who's a member of Parliament from Vancouver East, who is secretary-treasurer of the same association. We're here today to, once again, uh, on this 40th anniversary, call for an end to the occupation, an occupation which is illegal, which is immoral, and which is a humanitarian outrage. Um, I say illegal uh, because, of course, uh, it has been condemned by the United Nations. Uh, it's illegal under the provisions of the Geneva Conventions. Uh, the wall of shame, the illegal wall, has been condemned by the International Court of Justice. Um, so from every possible perspective, it is, it is illegal. It is immoral and unjust and a humanitarian outrage uh, for anyone who has eyes to see and ears to hear um, the appalling conditions that the Palestinian people are living in. Uh, and certainly I've witnessed that firsthand uh, on many occasions, um, the terrible living conditions, the grinding poverty, um, uh, the brutality of the occupation, the humiliation, the daily humiliation of the occupation, the destruction of houses and, and so on. So we're here today to, to call once again for an end to that occupation. Um, and as Canadians, uh, to call on our own government to end their, not only their shameful silence, but even worse, their active complicity in this moral outrage, in this illegal occupation, in the current siege that is taking place. Um, as a Canadian, I am saddened and ashamed of the position that my government has taken. Just yesterday, Amnesty International issued a powerful report uh, on the occupation marking the 40th anniversary, and they called for permanent international monitoring uh, in the occupied territories and reporting of human rights violations. Um, they condemned the wall and the growth of settlements, the checkpoints, the humiliation the collapse of the Palestinian economy. And I want to join my voice with theirs, and I know that Dr. Aruria was very active with Amnesty as well, uh, in calling for that uh, international uh, presence. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Canadian. I carry a, a Canadian passport. My country is Canada. The Palestinian people have no passport. They have no country. Uh, that must end. That tragedy must end. The occupation must end. And Canada's complicity in this uh, must be condemned as well. We have a sacred responsibility of never doing what is unjust. Back in the end of the 67 war, the United Nations decision was that Israel must return to the boundaries set for its establishment between 47 and 49. <clears throat> so Israel's continuous occupation of more and more territory which lawfully belongs to Palestine is a most serious violation of justice and it must be stopped. All of us have a responsibility to call for justice. To call for justice. To call that the United Nations really use every effort that it can to call all the nations to say, this is wrong. This is unjust. We set the boundaries. Israel must respect them and keep the law. So Canada must support <coughs> the international laws of justice by the Canadian government's de facto support of this occupation is supporting lawlessness and violating the sacred responsibilities to make decisions based on justice for all nations as well as individuals. As, American, as an American, I am ashamed that the United States usually for political reasons, gives massive support in the billions to Israel 
So all I say is we all have a responsibility to call for justice wherever the violation of a human rights is happening. Thank you. Kippy's main role as a union is to negotiate wages and working conditions for our membership. But in understanding the challenges that we're up against, we formed a solidarity committee so we could reach out to workers in other countries to look at the attacks that the working class was under around the world. And one of the first things that is violated in any country when you attack the working class are their human rights. So. I mean, I could go through and talk about, we're all well aware of the attack that Palestinian people are under. There's massive unemployment. They're in desperate situations. And many of them don't have the right to go to work, to school, or to a hospital because of the wall that has been built. Um, we had tremendous support from your committee in actually putting out the Wall Must Fall document that we use as an education primer for our membership to help them understand uh, the issues that are involved in this occupation. Uh, so without taking out much more time, uh, we truly hope that eventually we can find peace in the Middle East, but it has to be based on equality, justice, and human rights. Is there an existing or discussion of um, Cultural boycott of Israel, as we saw with apartheid South Africa? Uh, there is one in Europe, certainly. I know that the English, for instance, as you know, the British, uh, British trade uh, teachers have the uh, teachers' union and uh, university professors' union have uh, uh, they voted for a motion for boycott of uh, is of Israel of uh, Israeli institutions. As far as I remember, you had something like that in France. I was certainly part of it, and uh, there's some uh, you had. Is there other means of action? You have disinvestment, for instance. Disinvestment seems more popular in the United States. You have efforts towards uh, towards that. But uh, the, uh, it is also a fact that Israeli institutions take part in many ways into the occupation, and uh, they should not be supported for that. There's been more awareness of the existence of opposition within Israel to Israeli state policies and to the Israeli occupation. And I think in, here in, in North America there's been more awareness of the fact that uh, concern for Israelis uh, as a people, as a society, it's, it's not the same as uncritical support for the Israeli state or, you know, for, Israeli, or for the Israeli government. And I think there has been more awareness of the existence of Israeli anti-occupation groups and Israeli draft resistors. And I, th I think this also has to, has to be more widely known. A couple of the speakers have said that they feel ashamed by what the Canadian government has done recently, and I'd like to add my voice to that. Um, and as uh, Lee Lakeman said, uh, that in fact um, our own children are, are being put at risk by some of the things that are happening. And I'd just like to, to mention um, uh, the war in Lebanon, where our government said that the Israeli response was a measured response. Um, th there were literally hundreds of children children killed in that war and it seems to me that our government is basically taking Canadian children and saying put them on the firing line too because you can't say it's okay to kill Lebanese children and then say that Canadian children are, are not okay. So I have to ask the question what is the occupation doing to us? Um, and I think that Dr. Aruri mentioned that. It's not just, of course, the Palestinians are the major victims of the occupation, but what is it doing to us? Um, as, a, as a Jewish person, what is it doing to the Jewish people? Um, when you harm people, when you do injustice to others, you are actually destroying a piece of yourself. And the more that we harm Palestinian people, the, the, the more that we are harmed. Um, so I, I, I may be selfish of me, but I'd like like to say that this occupation is is hurting Jewish people and Canadian people and people all over the world.